Can you hear me now in the chat uh, online? Thank you. Yes, 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 we can hear you now. Thank you. Okay, so basically the activity for today is uh, if you can write whether you have been using entropy in your research, in your projects, and if yes, how. And once you have it ready, you can then again stick it to the wall. And if there are some contributions in the chat, I will read them. Okay, that's also possible. Okay, also, then it's good we can discuss some fields on fresh Great, into the production of trash trees. Mm -hmm. I have used my natural habitat entropy to measure how far my nonsense can take this connection. Mm -hmm. so, this one is uh, as yesterday. That series. So they know to measure the trade of quick between frequency resolution and mm -hmm. uh, you know this? Uh, yes, I know that. Yes, yes. And the other one was about Gaussian uh, assumption about uh, processing, um, and it needs uh, coherence functions to a mutual information okay. uh, between two processes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yet, but I will be using uh, the rate of energy production analog for first bandit processes. Okay. I published by this. I just found out two days ago. Ah, <laughs> that it was a thing two days ago. Okay. Uh, Arnold Paul is the paper? Yes. Yeah, I know that paper. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's pretty nice. <laughs> and and Lyle is using the uh, maximum entropy principle in research and complex systems. systems. And Valia? Okay, I will add uh, many uh, applications. applications. Uh, in information to the dynamics. Yes. Great. I think I so mentioned my application. So I if you look at my, my publications, more than half of them is somehow related to entropy. So so that's why I'm uh, giving the lecture now. Um, so in statistical physics, information theory, econophysics, so also time series analysis, sociophysics, image, image processing, and in many, many applications. Uh, I see, you know, there's something legit. Good. So, um, I'm sorry, I didn't pay attention. I don't know if, if you were going through this statement in the information theory course. But uh, when um, Claude Chadon was thinking how to name this newly discovered measure of missing information, then uh, John von Neumann replied to him, you should call it entropy for two reasons. In the first place, your uncertainty function has been studied in a statistical mechanics under that name, so it already has a name. In the second place, and more important, nobody knows what entropy really is. So in a debate, you will always have the advantage. Mm -hmm. So I think that's uh, also the like the main theme of this talk to see if it has some meaning and if we at the end will know a little bit more about the entropy. 
Um, yes. So basically, the maximum entropy principle has been introduced by uh, by Jane. So interestingly, he was the first one who was thinking about the connection between statistical mechanics and information theory. And this is the famous paper in 1957, where he says like uh, that this maximum entropy principle as the inference principle, so as a statistical principle of statistical estimation, gives the correct answer or like is consistent with the results people know in statistical mechanics because by maximizing it, you get this, uh, by maximizing entropy with some constraints, you get the uh, results that you know from thermodynamics. So you also have the sec first, second law and everything. So he was the first one who really found out that there is information content in thermodynamics and these two entropies up to this Boltzmann constant because one is one, so the, the information entropy is measured in bits, the thermodynamic entropy is measured by in joules per Kelvin. So this Boltzmann constant is this constant that, that joins them and it's not like very complicated function of them. It's just a constant that, that, is, that differs these two. Okay, so, um, so the maximum entropy principle, as we know it from the courses on statistical mechanics, is that we have a set of constraints that are constraints in, in, in like in terms of linear constraints, so arithmetic means, uh, and then you can formulate it as a theorem or just as a principle that, given the set of constraints, the best estimate of the underlying probability distribution is the one that maximizes the entropy functional subject to the constraint. So it means that it's the constraint optimization and for that end we use this uh, Lagrange functional, so this method, method of Lagrange multipliers. Um, here I mentioned that of course you can use the maximum entropy principle not only with the linear constraints but with some other types of constraints, but then we, it will be very hard to interpret the constraints in thermodynamics because typically the energy of a system is like an arithmetic mean. So you can do that, but then it's hard, much harder to interpret the thermodynamic interpretation of the entropy. So basically, if I say, if I take this general approach, so I take method of average multipliers, then um, it means that I maximize this function S minus, sorry for this double minus alpha, which is one Lagrange multiplier, uh, times the normalization constraint because we are in the probability simplex uh, minus this um, set of multipliers. So this is easy to take the partial derivative and then I get this state ds over dpi minus alpha minus the sum of lambda k uh, i k. So you see that this that the, the probability distribution is now only uh, contained in this, this partial derivative and the rest due to the linearity of the constraints doesn't contain them. So then in case I can write this as some function that is invertible for PI, then I can invert this function. And uh, then we see that there is a general so-called Legendre structure of the thermodynamics where the Lagrange function has the thermodynamic interpretation. So it's the entropy minus the beta times the, if, if the constraint is the energy, so it's minus beta times energy. And we know that the beta here plays the role of the uh, inverse temperature. So then this is called Massier function or this minus beta times free energy. So it means that the Lagrange function doesn't only serve us as a tool, but it has really its physical meaning. Of course, provided that this can be done, but very often we will study only cases where this inverse can be done. And now I will go through the examples from yesterday because we calculated the entropy, but now the question is what is the, what is the related uh, distribution that you get? 
uh, to see that the different entropies give you different distributions with very different results. So these are three cases that are um, notoriously known. Uh, that is the, the Max Boltzmann entropy, which gives you the, the Boltzmann distribution. So this uh, e to the so is the, uh, the exponential mm -hmm. of minus energy over the temperature. Uh, Bose Einstein gives you this one over uh, exponential minus one. And uh, Fermi Dirac gives you this ex one over exponential plus one. So here one has to be very careful because there is the only difference is this plus minus one, but it's a major difference, right? And if we look at the distributions for this, this is um, in terms of uh, n, which is the, the average number of states. So we see that, uh, and this is the, the um, this um, uh, transfer of energy. So it's basically the energy minus the chemical potential. So it's kind of effective energy. Uh, and I try to move it here. No, you're not. Okay, so it doesn't, doesn't matter. So then you see that while the Fermi Dirac uh, is bounded, then the, uh, the Maxwell Boltzmann or the, the Boltzmann distribution and Bose Einstein goes to infinity, but they are slightly different. Okay, sorry, can you repeat what, what information is displayed in the axis? So, so this, this is the, uh, the average number of particles. So let's say the number of particles is the, the average energy times the total number of particles, because in the case we have the discrete levels of, of, of energy states. So in Fermi Dirac, we have only zero, one. In the other, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera. But and so the, is the average number of particles in a certain state? In, in, a, cent, in a certain state. Okay. Yes. And that, this, what you don't see, is the, the, the energy over the temperature. So E over KT. Okay. And now to something more interesting. Uh, for the structure forming systems, if you, so this is the, the entropy we saw yesterday, just re remember that um, this is written in this, this curly piece, which is the probability that normalizes not that some of the pi is one, but some of the j pi j is one. And, and then we have the energy, then we can calculate the maximum distribution, which is almost like the, the Boltzmann distribution. So there is this prefactor n uh, to the j minus one over j factorial. And then we have something minus beta epsilon i. Here, the difference is that in normal Boltzmann distribution, there will be only alpha without any j. Here, the j is different for different j which makes us the normalization condition to look like this. So this J, ZJ, where ZJ is this partial partition function times E to minus alpha J is equal to one. And if you think about it, this is the polynomial equation in E to minus alpha, because this E to minus alpha J, and this polynomial equation is the order of the largest possible molecule, which means that if you have a largest molecule bigger than maybe three or four, there is no analytic formula for this because there is no analytic formula for solutions of, of a polynomial equation of order five and higher. So it means that this is probably one of the reasons why Boltzmann also didn't, uh, didn't like go forward because he couldn't at that time without computers solve the normalization constraint. Now we can do it numerically, of course, but uh, this is one of the mm, small disadvantage. From this, we can calculate the average number of molecules because the PIJ is just the number of molecules of the given state. And what you find out is that the free energy that is basically, again, the U minus TS can be written in terms of minus alpha over beta. This is something that appears if you consider the Boltzmann entropy. So the free energy is minus alpha over beta. Here is additional term minus M over beta. So then you see that um, this approach that uh, you take the partial, that you take the partition function 
and then from this you calculate all the quantities is here different because you have to basically this alpha if you say would be the logarithm or the partition function you will you will you cannot just sum up you have to basically solve for it so this is this is this is the difference here uh so in some cases the the partition function might be quite difficult to calculate and then it's maybe easier to calculate just either part of the partition function or some other quantities that then can be used to to get the final result are there some questions to this okay then i go to the case of charis entropy because for the case of charis entropy uh so uh, what the reason why it was introduced is that uh, the maximum distribution is q exponential i showed yesterday so it's basically this one plus one minus q x to one over minus q so it's like kind of power law so it's the this uh, transition between exponential and power law tails uh, which can be found in many data so the one of the motivation can be that this is something that can be used for fitting heavy tail data and here one small thing that is necessary to mention also regarding the the um, the partition function is that so we know that in a Boltzmann case you can write the, it, the distribution uh you know should be minus it doesn't matter so that you can write either e to minus alpha minus beta epsilon i or you can write it up e to the minus beta epsilon i over the partition function which is why you can do that is because it's exponential so of course the exponential uh, the exponential of the of the sum is the product of exponential so then basically you can take out this alpha and make make it as a prefactor here it's not possible in general. So this P star, uh, PIE star, it's the exponential of alpha plus, plus beta epsilon i is not generally equal to exponent of uh, minus beta epsilon i over this some kind of partition function. These are two different two different distributions. If you, if you really plug in the numbers, you see that these are two different uh, distributions. However, in this case, uh, you can derive this uh, kind of interesting identity that the Q exponential of the X plus Y can be written as product of ordinary product of exponentials, but then one of the arguments must be rescaled with this uh, other number. So basically what you can then find is that you can rewrite the alpha plus beta epsilon I a Q exponential as a product of these exponentials, but then this beta, which would be the temperature if there's temperature then changes and you have something like uh, like a renormalization group of this this temperature so now the question is whether the the, the what is the real temperature so whether the beta uh, tilde or whether the beta is this one over t and this is this is still a little bit uh, unclear sometimes people call it self preferential temperature but it's maybe a good sign of the fact that the temperature is not always easily related to the Lagrange multiplier, so that the relation might be in certain cases a bit more complicated. And this must be always shown uh, again. So for each type of different entropy, the relation between the thermodynamic potentials or thermodynamic variables and Lagrange multipliers must be really discussed. Okay, and now, uh, now we go to a bit advanced uh, thing because the other examples were uh, path dependent processes. So basically, uh, now we ask what is the question? What is the most probable histogram of a process that uh, has length n and some parameters theta? and uh, case the histogram. And now the probability distribution of finding this histogram, let's denote it PK given theta. So basically the most probable histogram is the, the, the minimum of the 
over, over all possible histograms of or uh, this should be maximum. So our, our maximum argument of this PK given theta. And very often, and we've seen it also yesterday, that this can be rewritten as the per, as the as the two terms. So this is the the multiplicity of the histogram, and then the probability of a microstate that belongs to that histogram. And what you can see then is that by taking the logarithm, then this logarithm of this pk given theta is basically equal to logarithm of wk. So this is our entropy, and then logarithm of this gk. Uh, theta. So this is this is this probability of finding this histogram given the parameters. And I hope I think that in the lecture on information theory you came across to this uh, term cross entropy. So then the the this S rel is the relative entropy, so divergence. And for the Kulbach library, you know that you can write it as the entropy and cross entropy, then with the appropriate signs. This is very often the case also for the generalized entropies, uh, but uh, not always. So we will see that in our cases, uh, we can find such a nice structure. And the, not, then really the, the log W plays the role of entropy and the log K cross entropy plays the role of the constraint. So, because it contains this prior probability distribution and we will see that it naturally uh, gives us the constraint. So basically, uh, if we, I take the cross entropy, the, the ordinary one, so uh, if I have uh, Shannon entropy and Kulbach library divergent, then, then basically this cross entropy is minus sum of PA log QI, where the QI are the QI probabilities. And I can say, okay, let's, Thing, or let's consider that these prior probabilities depend exponentially on, on the energy. So I basically plug in the, um, the Boltzmann distribution of the prior distribution. And then what you, what you see is that this cross entropy is basically beta times average energy plus the logarithm of partition function, which is the free energy. So uh, basically then I get, get this nice little, um, little uh, relation between the Kubak library divergence entropy and cross entropy. And of course, the for the case of path dependent processes, the, the constraints might not be of this form because then uh, the prior distribution of, the, of observing the histogram might be different. And this is what we see in a minute. And uh, the case is that for, for the multiplicity of trajectory histogram. So we have, so this is the SSR processes. So we have shown that in this case, the entropy is this entangled entropy. And if we consider that after each run, we drive a ball to a random state with probability QI, then basically we can think about what is the probability of the histogram in the following way. So once we jump, then after this first step, the only available space is the states below. So, so here is shown by this green line that at the first time, all the lower states, uh, one to nine are uh, available. While if we jump to five, then basically this, the subspace that is available to us is just from one to four. And this means that if you little bit think about the, what is the probability of observing this histogram is that uh, by uh, probability of particular sequence, each visit of a state that is not a ground state uh, contributes to the probability of the next visit to a state, the next state with a factor of one minus QI. And this QI is the sum, the sparkle sum of the states that are below this given state. And uh, only if we get, if there is this one, we get the renormalization factor since the process restarts and then we can throw it again. So by um, really thinking about this a uh, little bit, one can see that this uh, probability of sampling the histogram K is the QI to KI over this big Q I minus one to KI. And then by taking the, the regular uh, approximation, so take, taking the logarithm and, and, and using Sterling's formula, 
then you can show, or even here, you don't have to use the sterling because there's no factorials. Then the cross entropy looks like this term. So basically this is the, what we've seen before, plus this term where this log Q is the, this log of this, uh, this parcel sum of the probabilities. And if we then assume again that the prior distribution is the is the Boltzmann distribution. So we say that the probability of of of, of restarting depends on on the energy kind of. So let's say on the height of the, of the stair. Then basically we get the following uh, relation that basically the cross entropy is the beta times the average energy times beta times something that is called this F. And this is the average sum over the partition, partial partition function, where the partial function goes only from one to some state. So I basically take all these steps where I go from one to, to one, one to two, one to three, one to four, one to five, because these are all these partial partition functions that are available for a state that, that is not the ground state. So then if you do the, um, okay, so I, I, I don't have it here. I don't know why, but then basically if you do the maximum entropy distribution the principle, the, so basically take the entropy and maximize it with this constraint, what you get is, um, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to end this slide. Is that the, the P star I is then little Q I over big Q I. And if you plug in that Q I is um it's uniform, then what you get is that the PI is proportional to one over I. So it's zip slow. But, but we didn't say that the QIs are the Boltzmann distribution. Or, or yeah. So yeah. So so in that case, um, it would be for the very high temperature. So this is the, the the limit of beta goes to zero. But in case if if it's not that case, so then of course you get that this is the e to the minus theta epsilon i over some j to i minus one. J. And interestingly enough, if you do it for a large number of, of, of steps, and this is something that is not doesn't have so much difference, it almost always looks very similar to this zip saw. Isn't the, the denominator sum to one? No, I don't know. No, because this is this is the no, it's not sum to one because this denominator just goes to i minus one. So oh, okay. this pi basically this is not the full uh, full uh, partition function, it's this partial partition function. And with each state it, it, it increases. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why. And, and, and you can show very easily that if this epsilon, uh, like the distribution of the energy states is not too wild, then it's the, the, this distribution effectively is very close to this zip slow. So there is some universality class and because of this slow driving. So unless this, 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 this difference between the energy levels is somehow exponential or something like that, and very often you get distribution that is very close to the zip slow. Zip slow in a log log scale looks like a line. So this is very often seen. And this might be explanation for many of these power law uh, distributions because then what you see is that the power law distribution is obtained because of this really asymmetry between driving and relaxation. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't add this slide to the. I will add it later after the talk so that you can see it. Um, the Poirot, this is kind of interesting because uh, 
And now I will not go to the detail because it's kind of technical. So we see that the Poya urn is this, this log of PI. Um, and then you can find uh, in a similar way the, this cross entropy. And then we can say, let's, this is kind of complicated. Let's look at the case where we send n to infinity. So then we have this uh, minus log pi, and then we have this, th again, the same term. So qi uh, log pi, now, now it's the, the opposite. So because no, before we had the pi log qi, but now we have qi log pi plus log qi. And if you calculate the maximum entropy distribution, it looks like that basically the PI is the normalization constant times QI minus gamma. And this is kind of interesting because this, uh, if you think about it, this uh, cannot be satisfied to the boundary solution. So there are three scenarios. So either the, the optimal distribution is the private distribution, or it's this kind of, it's called winner takes it all, because then because uh, if you do the maximization, you find that basically the, the derivative, the partial derivative of the Lagrange uh, function cannot be zero, which means that it must be the corner solution. And the corner solution is either one or zero. And in that case, only one could be one and the rest is zero. So in the end is really the winner takes it all. So it means that if there is some, um, depending on this, this initial, uh, so the QI is initial ratio or initial probability of the balls. So relative number of the frequency of the balls in the urn, then basically by drawing and drawing, what you effectively get is that you will add more and more balls of the same color. And then most, almost all the balls are of this color that, that wins. So interesting enough is that in that case, even the maximum entropy distribution doesn't give us the, the, the interior solution of the probability simplex. So that's, that's very interesting here. Uh, yes, so that's, that, that, was, that was the examples. Now I just want to briefly say something about the uh, uh, related principles. So what we've seen is that effectively the maximum entropy principle can be seen as a special case of the principle of minimum related uh, relative entropy. So basically we minimize this, this kullback library divergence with respect to some prior distribution. And, and basically this is how we can encode the constraints uh, in our case. And, and if, the, if the divergence can be written as a sum of entropy and cross entropy, then we get this. But in information theory more generally, I think you've discussed it already a bit. Uh, you can see it as really minimization of, of the divergence. Uh, here, of course, we have the edit value uh, with the um, present of turbulent potentials, but in general, it's just basically, for example, uh, having priors from the models or measurements and we have posteriors from parametric family, and then we do the parametric optimization. And then the advantage is that um, the relative entropy is defined for uh, discrete and continuous distribution. So you know that uh, when doing like continuous entropy, so replace the sum with the integral, uh, you might get into some troubles because basically the entropy, uh, the continuous entropy is then might be negative or might not be so well behaved. The reason is that basically you can see the entropy as a special case of divergence where you take the prior as the uniform distribution in this discrete case. And of course, since the uniform distribution uh, doesn't exist in the continuous case, like if, if, you, if you have a con like con uh, continuum number of states, so if you go from minus infinity to infinity, then uh, you need to choose other prior distribution uh, so it's nice because it connects information theory, thermodynamics, and ge geometry. Because from the this can be used also to calculate uh, thermodynamic length and these things. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about the generalization if, of the maximum entropy principle, maximum minimum divergence principle. If you have a 
like process where you don't have only states, but you have the trajectories, you can uh, basically define something that is called caliber, which is the trajectory version of entropy. So you take the, the probability of observing the trajectory. Maybe for you, interesting is that you can write entropy production in terms of this uh, caliber. So it's the, the or divergence, and it's divergence between the full probability of observing forward trajectory and the backward trajectory. Hope that you've seen this with, uh, with the introduction to stochastic thermodynamics. So this, this is quite, quite useful. So you see that there is this connection. <laughs> And uh, I recommend this paper, Principles of Maximum Entropy and Maximum Caliber in Statistical Physics. Uh, it's in Reduce or Model Physics, so you can find many applications of this. The good thing is that with uh, Caliber, you can have many, like much richer structure of constraints. So, for example, you can say, I have a constraint in the sense that I count, I, I basically say, this is my number of transitions from state I to state J. And basically I say, this is average number of transitions and what is the distribution? And then what you see is that with the, what you can easily show that with the maximum caliber, that the process that maximizes the caliber is basically Markovian because uh, this joint probability can be written as the uh, product of transition probabilities from one state to the other. So basically the Markovian process is maximize the caliber with this given constraint. So this is kind of, Nice uh, thing to see. Then so, I so, so could, could, could you repeat like your information is about the number of positions? Yes. Yes, of exactly. So number you want to infer like the position rates for the and rate. and you want to infer the probability of observing trajectories. Okay. Because it's so by counting the the probabilities, uh, it's not a very uh, clear whether the system is Markovian or whether. Like it can be just you know a, a result of the more complicated non-Markovian process with the memory, mm -hmm. and if you use the principle of maximum caliber and just say these are my constraints, then you find out that the process that maximizes the caliber is the Markov process. Okay. Okay. So, so your your only constraint is a number is this information about the yeah number, number of transitions. And then you recover. Okay, okay, okay. And then you recover that basically, yes, okay. that, the, that, the, that the trajectory distribution is, is Markovian. So basically the joint probability is product of probabilities of these two point transitions. Okay, thank you. And then here I just mentioned, I don't want to go to too many details. There are other extreme principles in thermodynamics, Sprigogine's principle of minimum entropy production, principle of maximum entropy production for living systems. And they are kind of controversial. Uh, they are, have also their Wikipedia page. They have also their uh, page on this Azimuth project. Maybe it can be interesting to you to go through it and to read it. And the last thing I wanted to mention is um, that basically the maxent uh, can be seen as the inference tool because the maxent principle in physics consists of two steps. First step is to calculate the distribution. And this is really just the statistical inference method. And the second is plugging the distribution back to entropy and calculating the exact number of entropy and use it to calculate free energy and all these things. And this is really the second step connects us with the thermodynamics. And what we can find out is that for each, for each distribution, that we obtain by this maximization procedure, uh, there can be a, exist a whole class of entropies and constraints that lead to same distribution, but generally different thermodynamics. Um, and then of course, the interpretation of the Lagrange parameters in terms of these uh, thermodynamic quantities can be different. So that, that's kind of uh, interesting. And here are two uh, maybe Easy examples. So basically, I, since the maximum entropy principle maximizes the entropy, then if I take basically increasing function of that entropy, that gives me the same distribution, right? Because maximum of uh, a function and maximum of an increasing function of that function is the same. Doesn't change anything. But if you do the calculation, then of course the Lagrange parameters will be changed. Here in that case, uh, 
is that that it will change the Lagrange parameters, but not the ratio. So there is some, I would say, calibration invariance of that. But uh, important thing is that each of these changes leads to different thermodynamics because if we really want to plug it back to the entropy uh, and or the function of the entropy, this will give us generally different numbers. So this is, for example, the case for uh, for the relation between Lagrange multipliers of size entropy and Rennie entropy. Both of them uh, give us the Q exponentials, but their Lagrange parameters are different. So we can calculate it, and you see that this is something, this one over Q uh, uh, is something that we saw uh, on the previous slides when I said, about, uh, when I mentioned this self referential temperature. So there was this Q exponential of something to one minus Q. This is exactly this, this factor. So we see that, that now this factor comes from the fact that we maximize size entropy and maybe not Rennie. Because the, since the Rennie entropy is um, additive, then uh, it's extensive and then the, entropy, uh, then the temperature is intensive while the size entropy is non-extensive. It means that the temperature is non-intensive. So it really changes with the size of the system so that the energy can be uh, extensive again. And then, uh, okay, I didn't add the, the other example, doesn't matter. Uh, that's all I think that you are for today tired enough. Uh, if you have any question or something, um, you can ask now, otherwise that's it. Uh, the, the difference will change from range to intense. Yes, because uh, the Rennie entropy can be written in terms of like this one over Q, the logar this logarithm of Tsalis entropy. And although they give the same distribution, this Q exponential, then these Lagrange multipliers are different. So by plugging in back to the entropy, the same distribution to, to different entropies, you get basically the different relation between the Lagrange multipliers and the, for example, the temperature or free energy or something. Here, the free energy is the same because the alpha over beta, this ratio remains the same, but the temperature it changes. Something else? Mm -hmm. So yeah, could, could you keep the reference for this paper in which they were, um, yeah, they were, uh, they find that this this process, sorry, <laughs> if you were mentioned the number of transitions per unit of time in the process was smart Is it this paper? The that maximizes the energy. Yeah. Is yeah. it this paper uh, review of modern physics by Steve Press and the guys? Um, okay, it's, so it's, it's, yeah, okay. it's quite long, but yeah, so is it in this paper I recommend reading it? Okay. Maybe, I mean, maybe it's a very naive question, but I mean, why, why the probability distribution that describes the system should minimize the actual? Like it's, it's a postulate, right? So it's an axiom. T tomorrow we go to this axiomatic approach. Uh, I mean, um, it's kind of it's related to the second law of thermodynamics because the the entropy. Uh, a production must be positive so you can then relate it to the case that so it it can only decrease and and at the end of like in the infinite time limit you end with distribution that is maximal and that's why the entropy should be maximized mm -hmm. so this is vaguely the connection but of course uh, it's not so easy uh and doesn't work in all cases but this is the general idea that Oh, also, if you were discussing this H theorem, that is basically the related to entropy. This is that that the, the process, the typically the Markov process, goes towards as it relaxes, goes towards the distribution that maximizes entropy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just, just, yeah. No comment. So uh, I think that's it and enjoy the evening. Thank yeah. you.